I dig how these shows are so early, you know, I can see it. <laughs> we named our Sana. son. Aww. I'm so honored. Thank you. There used to be a lot of goats and cats named after me. There are not that many people who named their son. Their son. I've got some family here tonight. My cousin Olinda is here. And, uh, there's also someone here. Always so great to see you. There's also someone here who, uh, who I hitchhiked to San Francisco with when I was a kid. We were both kids. And in fact, I think she was like 17 and I was 15 or something. <laughs> And uh, I'm in honor of my friend Sandy. I'm going to sing this song here, The Barricades of Heaven. Nice. This might be a good time to say this. Is a, you know, every night is a little different. Sometimes it's real different. Um, and, uh, Last night was good, right? It'll be interesting to see how how it changes and what's different because um, this has been great. We we kept the great weather here. It's amazing. A great couple of days, so we'll be looking for the opportunity to slip in something different, something we didn't do last night. <laughs> so I, I was playing in Italy one time and, and uh, I had to play the same place two nights in a row. It was this really beautiful square. With, you know, but it freaked me out that we were playing this big public show and lots of the people would be there for the second night. You know, so I like so in the middle of this second night, I just sort of hung a big left and I started calling all these songs that we really didn't know. <laughs> And when I listened back to those tapes, the first night was good and everything, but the second night was on its way to be incredible <laughs> until I did that. <laughs> so, um, I don't know how many of you were here last night, but, um, oh, good, good, good. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but they're different. <laughs> Instrumentalist, great. He's playing. He's playing all kinds of guitars, pedal steel, lap steel. This is Greg Lease. <laughs> Greg and I wrote this song. And uh, and with our good friend Jeff Young, this is the thing that I kept trying to form up. And, like we'd get in the sound checks and we'd play on. Play around with songs, so I can gradually the pieces of the song musically sort of came together. And, uh, like we never, you know, like in in the music business now, they have all kinds of collaborations, you know, and features, you know, and these things are booked through agents. 
hey, would you like to write a song with this guy? Yeah. And they book it for like two o'clock on Wednesday and you write together. <laughs> it's, it's always giving me the willies. I, just, you know, I, mean, I, don't, I don't do it that way. I can't. I can't. I don't know what I'm going to feel like at two o'clock on Wednesday. <laughs> so it's great that, that the people I play with are such, um, have such fertile imaginations and so, you know, and I'm, you know, if I get, if I head very far down this track, I start feeling like I should give them the publishing to all these songs because of what they, <laughs> what they contributed to them. And let that be the end of that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a song that, uh, yeah, Greg came up with the essential stuff of this song. You know, this is a, uh, a, inspired by a remark made by uh, an oceanographer named Captain Charles Moore who discovered the great Pacific garbage patch a few years ago, like 10 years ago maybe, and he's sort of, you know, been telling people about it since. But one of the things he said is that the ocean is downhill from everywhere. So this is how that song began. And it's just downhill from everywhere. introduce this song it invariably sounds like a uh, it makes it sound like a bunch of other songs but this is actually a, a, a singular song for me something that I don't get tired of singing and that I actually need to hear from time to time so
line change the world. I said, oh, it does it every day. Exactly what I said, huh? You, know? you could be in like at a bus station when like nothing going on, people sitting there waiting like that, waiting for a bus or something like that, and put on your phones and listen to Aretha Frank. <laughs> and it's absolutely transformed. It's become another world right there right. in the doing of that. Right. Anyway, uh, it's a song I really like. I wrote this song. This is a song I wrote in New York City first time I went there. And uh, I was so homesick. Even though I was with friends that were from where I was from, we were all in this little pod of people huddling in the Lower East Side. But we were all from, from uh, Orange County, actually, and Long Beach. <laughs> My friend Adam would buy these joints and they looked like toothpicks. And he would sit there looking at the like, yeah, big California pot smoker. And he seemed like, not doing anything. But, and we were all musicians and he would, uh, he wanted to join in, but he, he'd been in a band, you know? So he'd, and he played piano in a band, but there's no piano there, but there was an auto harm. So he would like play like, you know, heat wave on the auto harm. <laughs> Got some of those. Okay. All right, this is the this is a song I wrote, surrounded by brick buildings and cement. It's called "A Child in His Hill." All right. and hounds. Did you know? You know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. when, that was, I used to hear Sonny Cherry and Brian McGee at this club that I was uh, in. And uh, Sonny Cherry would do that. They also did kind of like these like, kind of dog sounds in there too. You channel your inner Chester. <laughs> 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 If you want, you can just play the harp, and then I'll do that. <laughs> so this is a song that uh, I, we, I, we worked up a week or so ago in Los Angeles. Uh, my son was bringing a friend of his to the show that had been named after the show. I mean, after the song. He wanted me to sing the song if we could, if we could summon it. So uh, we did, and it's, it's, it reminds suddenly remember how much I love this song. Um, 
We would do it sometimes if someone called for it in a, in a solo show or like, you know, one where you could be forgiven if you didn't get it just right, you know. But we're leaning into it and committing. <laughs> this is our, our version of Linda Paloma.
in front of mine, a song that, uh, well, this song had, had a big influence on me. It, it, it was, it, I, I found this song at a time when I was trying to write some songs about what was going on politically. In those days, uh, thinking about our country's involvement in Central America, and the when I, when I found this song, I was very grateful to have it. The great uh, Panamanian singer Ruben Blaze said one time uh, to a bunch of us, he said, uh, you're making a big mistake. You're letting them have the flag. You don't want to do that. And, uh, so, I was really happy to find this song, and I've been singing it since. This was written by Stephen Van Zandt. Every passing thing And everyone 
you know, I read about her, but I didn't really know very much about her life, and I never really heard her speak. So this film was really, really moving. I want to tell you about it. It's called the Fanny Lou Hamer's America. And uh, in it, she not only speaks, and she's, it's, it's like her story sort of told in her own words, but also she sings quite a bit. There's a bunch of singing. You suddenly realize after a while, oh, that's her. She's the one singing this amazing, wonderful, low, floaty gospel music. Uh, we want to dedicate this song to Fanny Lou Hamer and everybody who works for racial justice in our country. I don't do the 
Oh, yeah.
Save My Songs For Me by Jackson Brown. This is sound check. I'm a little early. Thankfully, my seats are a lot closer than where I am now, because if I zoom out to 100% normal zoom, I'm kind of far away. But it's okay. I'll be in the second row soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs>